Hi everyone, I'm Shirley and I'm a software developer at GDS. So today I'll be talking about um, Redux libraries. So how many of you here are using Redux for your application? Let me show you this. Oh, okay. So basically I'll be introducing two libraries. One is the uh, Redux Actions and another is the Use Users. So for Redux Actions, right, basically it's the library it provides you another way of like, writing your entire Redux. Uh, process. It sort of like removes the boilerplates that you normally use in the default. You see in the default uh, Redux documents. So, so this is actually the default boilerplate. So for actions, you have an object with your property type and your payload. And then, so you dispatch your action to your user. And the user is basically just a, a function which takes in the state of the store and then the action, the action that you pass in. And then, as you can see, right, in the video, sir, they use a switch case. And depending on the what kind of action type, you'll go into which case. So, but in this case, I only put a add counter as a case. So after which, when they go into the case, so in this case, I use add counter. I dispatch a add counter um, action. And then it will go into the add counter case and return a completely new state. So if I use Redux actions, there's another way of creating actions. Uh. So they provide a function called create action. And basically, you pass in the name of your, the type of your action, which is, in this case, I use increment. And then uh, when you dispatch this action, right, basically, you just put in the increment and then uh, put in also the, what, the payload that you have uh, into the argument, as an argument. So when I call increment and the bracket whatever payload, it basically returns my type, which is the action type increment, and then my payload, which is the value 10 and ID 4. Yeah. And then, so for the reducer, right, they, are, uh, they provided a uh, function, handle actions, which takes in a map of reducers, and then the initial state of the, the initial state. La. So in this case, mine is just an empty array. So as you can see, this increment and decrement is basically the action type. And then the, the value is actually just a function that returns a completely new state. Yeah, so this function actually takes in the state and your payload. So next, I'm going to go through the reduce reducers. So for reduce reducers, um, I think those that use Redux, you all know as combined reducers, right? So this is basically a state, it's a state tree. La. So it's the state of the entire application. And then within the state tree, there are many subtrees. So I have items, takeaway, and payment mode. So for this example, it's basically a, an app that I created to take orders, uh, food orders. So as our application gets more and more complex, we want to like, designate reducers to, to update certain subtrees. We don't want like, one reducer and update the entire state. Uh. So in this case, I have an items reducer that updates the item subtree, and then the takeaway reducer to update the takeaway subtree, and then payment mode to update the payment mode subtree. So, but then as you know, you know when you create store, you only can take in a reducer, right? So we have to combine. We cannot just throw in like items, takeaway, payment mode into like create store bracket, uh, items, takeaway, payment mode. So we need a combined reducer which combines all the reducers of the subtrees. And then this combined reducer basically returns a reducer that iterates through the, the child reducers, which are the items takeaway and payment mode. Uh, and then it will gather whatever these reducers return and gather it into a single state tree, which is this entire thing. So what if, what if um, I have different reducers, but, but it updates the same tree? Same subtree. La. So we cannot use combined reducers. La. So basically, that's where the reduce reducers come in. So let's say I have it in items, right? I, can, I have an add food and add drink reducer. So add food basically adds the food, then drink adds the drinker. So in this case, to, to combine both these reducers in a single reducer, we can use a reduce reducers which is add food and add drink. So I'll show you a demo of how it looks like. So 
this is by food reducer. So, um, can I see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I've a add burgers reducer and a add drinks reducer, which corresponds to like. So basically, this is the add burger reducer and the drinks reducer. So they are actually updating the food items, which is the same sub tree. So as you can see, when I click fish burger and and I add a green tea hot, it will it will basically add to the food items. So what I did was I used reduce reducers and I throw in the add burgers reducer and add drinks reducer. Can see right? Okay. Yeah. And then to create a new reducer known as food items. So I have two sub trees. Like basically, one is the food items, the other one is the takeaway. So takeaway is just like tap out. Then um. So. For food items and the takeaway, right? I'm using combined reducer since they are updating the different sub trees. So here I did a combined reducer. I throw in these food items here, and then the takeaway reducer, which produces the then which which I use the combined reducer to to combine them into a single reducer. So actually, you can. Not don't use the you can don't use the reduce reducer. It depends on like if you want to structure your entire because um, if let's say you have a reducer that does like a lot of switch cases and all that, it might be get too messy. So you might want to split it up to make it neater and more readable. So that's when the reduce reducers come in and yeah, and also for the redux reactions, like if you want to remove like boiler plates and all that. Yeah, so that's all for me. Next speaker.